We all know that the business end of a porcupine's quill is no fun. These spiky rodents have one of the most painful defense mechanisms in the animal kingdom. But can their butt-mounted shivs do more than just deter would-be predators? Could these hundreds of razor-sharp quills actually take out the big cats of the African plains? Let's find out. When it comes to a showdown between the ferocious African leopard and a timid porcupine, most people would bet on the animal with the big teeth. But the outcome might just shock you. The humble porcupine is just one of those animals that wants to be left alone. It's a vibe I completely understand. I mean, so strong is a porcupine's aversion to interacting with other animals that it literally evolved sharp spikes all over its body that threaten to impale anyone that gets too close. Personally, I found just putting on a pair of headphones usually stops people from talking to me on the subway, but stabbing people apparently works too. Now you might be forgiven for confusing porcupines with hedgehogs. Sure, they're both small, furry animals covered with hardened spikes, but that's about where the similarities end. While hedgehogs are cute little balls of optimism and sunshine, porcupines are literal knife-wielding hell rats. Threaten a hedgehog and they'll curl up into an adorable prickly stress ball. Scare a porcupine and they'll stab you with a literal hypodermic needle. Part of the ever-friendly rodent family, there are actually two main types of porcupines. Old world porcupines found throughout Asia, Africa, India, the south of Europe, and the Levant and New World porcupines found in North and South America. But it's the Old World porcupines that regularly have to defend themselves against large apex predators, especially on the African plains. And it's for this reason that their sharp quills are arranged in clusters on the porcupine's back and rear. In fact, these quills cover every inch of the porcupine's body except for their face and underbelly. But what's so scary about a couple of toothpicks when you're literally the king of the jungle? Well, these quills are more than meets the eye. Like your standard 18-gauge hypodermic needle, a porcupine's quills are hollow, only the tip is much, much sharper. They're made from hardened keratin, the same fibrous protein that forms hair, claws, and nails. While they may look smooth to the naked eye, zoom in and that's where the real fun begins. Microscopic barbs line the length of the quill, but they aren't facing towards the point. These barbs, which kind of look like fish scales, face backwards and act as an anchor into whatever they find themselves poked into. You see, once a quill enters flesh, these tiny barbs fan out and seal the puncture, making pulling them out extremely painful. To make matters worse, the quill tip breaks off easily and can often work its way deeper into the skin over time. If you do manage to pull them out, the fanned out barbs do a whole lot of damage on the way out often making the entry wound twice as big. So, how do you end up impaled by a porcupine quill? Despite what you might have heard, porcupines can't shoot their quills at you. When pressure is applied along the quill, a special membrane under the porcupine's skin breaks, allowing it to be pulled out. But don't worry, they grow back. That's not to say the porcupine can't go on the offensive. They often strike with their tails to stab predators with their quills. This design feature isn't perfect though. Porcupines have been known to fall out of trees and accidentally stab themselves with their own spines. So, you'd have to be pretty unlucky to get impaled by a porcupine, right? Well, kinda. While most older animals know not to mess with this walking reverse pincushion, occasionally a juvenile big cat gets curious. When threatened, a porcupine activates small follicle muscles over its body erecting the quills into a spiny defense pattern. These quills, particularly concentrated on the crest and rump of the porcupine, fan out, creating an almost impenetrable shield around the rear of their bodies. Now, if you remember, these quills are hollow, meaning that when they hit each other, they create an intimidating rattle, similar to the one used by the rattlesnake. And we said, most older predators have learned their lesson as kids messing with porcupines, so they have to be pretty hungry to want to engage seriously. Most lionesses eventually get bored and move on. But not all animals are as wise, and sometimes the showdown is on. Who do you think would win between a porcupine and a leopard? 
How about a lion? Is there any other animal that you think could make light work of the porcupine? Let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, keep watching. Leopards are notorious for not only their ferocity, but also their massively varied diet. They're the guy at the buffet keen to try out every single option, no matter how much the oysters disagree with him. Ah, oh, you lost it! So it comes as no surprise that, on occasion, leopards try to add porcupines to their afternoon snack. At first, the interaction is one of confusion. If you had to eat a cactus, where would you even start? Porcupines favor their defensive rear end position, making sure their quills are always facing the threat. The leopard can only really paw at the waving quills, trying to find an opening. More often than not, leopards will end up with a few warning barbs, and the porcupines escape into the horizon. Other times, it's not so pretty. With enough quills that find their mark, leopards can very quickly find themselves impaled on up to 109 inch needles. While this is incredibly painful, having this many porcupine quills stuck in you is actually life threatening. Quills stuck in the mouth prevents animals from chewing, eating, drinking, or swallowing, leading to a slow, agonizing death. Now, despite this hardcore defense mechanism, sometimes hunger is a more powerful motivator. This leopard fought through the pain and managed to bag his next spiky meal. But successful hunts like this aren't common, and other animals have tried and failed to take down the mighty porcupine. Sometimes, snakes don't know any better and try to go for a quick porcupine pick-me-up. That's if they can get past the rattling defensive spike shield first. But let's just say a snake managed to sneak up on a porcupine face first. In South Africa's Lake Elland Nature Reserve, cyclists noticed an engorged African rock python lying on the side of the road. Judging by the bulge, it was pretty obvious that the 13-foot snake had recently eaten a big meal. It wasn't uncommon for pythons of this size to swallow small impalas or warthogs whole and just lay around lethargically for a day or two while they digest it. This python, however, was clearly struggling. It was breathing heavily, and moving the bulge down its body seemed to be a lot more difficult than normal. A few days later, other visitors to the reserve found the python dead. The reserve manager collected the snake and performed a dissection, revealing a large porcupine. The entire internal length of the snake was impaled by quills, completely shredding the snake's insides. When you consider that the damage of a porcupine's quills is intensified by muscular movement, spare a thought for this python, whose entire body is one continuous muscle, running against a grain of 300 porcupine javelins. Good times. Over in North America, New World porcupines are armed with thinner, smaller quills. However, their damage can be just as deadly. Curious dogs often get their noses way too close to the business end of a porcupine and can end up with a painful, spiky quill beard that makes eating and drinking impossible. Removal of these spines is so painful, dogs often have to be heavily sedated before the 200 plus quills can be removed. While it's a tough lesson to learn, porcupines shouldn't be messed with. No meal is that delicious that you'd risk your face just to dig in. Unless you're a fan of cactus cuisine or have a fetish for needles, my advice is to just steer clear. And that's all we have time for today. If you have any suggestions of future video topics, please let us know downstairs in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please hit that big red button right now. See you next time.